Welcome to Mr. R's Art Class. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thumbs, subs, and ring that bell. So for this project, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a jack learn inside of Tinkercad. This is going to challenge you to think of how you could use some of the shapes that they provide for you, some of the basic shapes, some of the characteristic shapes, some of the 3D models that they provide for you, and create a jack o' lantern. So this is going to kind of push the limits of what you know about um, creating holes, grouping projects, mirroring, flipping, rotating, um, skewing different shapes inside of Tinkercad, and really get you to think about how you could use this negative space that you create from these shapes into creating a jack-o'-lantern. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this project here, we're gonna go inside of tinkercad.com. I'm gonna create a new design. I'm gonna go click on that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a jack-o'-lantern. So what you could do is we're gonna go into Google, you can open up a new tab, and I'm gonna type in jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna click on images. And just by looking at some of these, this one looks like Jack here, so I'm going to do something like that. And even looking at some of these, these suggestions here, this one says Jack Skeleton, so I'm going to click on that. I think this is a good reference up here on the top left. So, and I'm going to go ahead and right click, save image as. So make sure that you save your images that you use as references. And then if it doesn't take you automatically to your projects, you can go over here on the left hand side, click on documents the academic year, the period you have my class, the semester we're currently in, and then we need to make a new folder for this project. So I'm gonna click up here where it says new folder. I'm just gonna call it pumpkin. And then go inside that folder, make sure you're inside that folder, and then go ahead and click on save. And I'm just gonna use that as a reference. I'm gonna close that tab there. Uh, maybe bring up my reference. So I'm gonna click up here where it says uh, the follow explore. Bring up my reference. And then just have that there when I need it. Make this a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go back to Tinkercad, and what we're going to do is we're going to use several different techniques here inside of Tinkercad. And automatically in Tinkercad, it's going to take you over to these basic shapes. When I click on that drop down menu, go over to where it says characters, scroll down. There's going to be a pre made jack line. What we're going to do is we're just going to click on the pumpkin, and we can scale this up. I'm going to grab a corner. Just scale that up. And I'm gonna try to make this as big as possible. To give myself enough space. I'll probably even make this a little bit rounder just because that's how Jack's head looks like, right? All right, so now I'm gonna go into the front view. So we're in the front view of the, the jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna go to top to center it. All right, there we go, front view. And let's bring up my reference. And so we have these shaped eyes, some ovals for the nose. Let's go into my basic shapes that we have over there. Um, so these these eyes here kind of look like the the round roof shapes. So I'm probably gonna bring that over. Let's bring some of those over there. And you might have to rotate if you know you click on a shape and it's just not showing up. To move around your canvas here. All right, so I'm going to make sure that I'm in front view. Let's look at the, the angle of that shape. So these little arches here are going to give you your angles. I'm going to go to top view to see how this arch was placed. Back to front view. I'm going to change 
the angle of this. Let's see what 90 degrees looks like. It's a little bit flatter here on the top because Jack looks a little bit uh, a little bit angry there. So I'm gonna rotate a little bit more so it's slightly at an angle. So this would be my eyes for Jack. And I'm not gonna place it yet. Using the right arrow to move over. Down arrow to bring towards me. Let's go to the side view to make sure that it's placed back into the shape. Maybe even scale this up a bit. There has to be some intersection. Let's go back to our reference. So I'm going to copy, paste, and then mirror. I just even rotate this let's see what options it gives us let's do your negative 90 So I know Tinkercad isn't perfect, right? Um, so just play around with some of the different options. Sometimes we're trying to hover over something and it doesn't work perfectly. Um, I was even trying to rotate the angle right now and it wasn't recognizing that I was clicking on it. So front view. And then for the mouth here, let's maybe do the nostrils next. So for the nostrils, you could do, let's see if they have an oval shape. You might do an elongated cylinder. That's probably what we're gonna have to do. Uh, so let me grab a cylinder here. Place it. I'm gonna rotate it towards me. Let's go for the side view, yeah. Let's do about 90. Back to the front. I'm going to kind of squeeze this in a bit because that old, we need an oval shape. And change the color just so it stands out. Let's just do red. It doesn't matter what color it is because we're going to turn this into a hole anyway. Let's go back to the side so I can bring this forward, back to the front. So constantly change the angles here if it works for you. Back to the front. All right, even though I'm clicking the front, it's moving me to the side. So I, like, I, like I said, ticker cat isn't perfect. I'm gonna change the angle. <clears throat> to negative 15. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my reference here. So that's gonna be that nostril. And now I'm gonna go ahead and copy, paste, mirror, and then move to the side. All right, so let's go ahead and turn these into holes here. So anything I want to be a hole, I'm gonna create a hole and then I need to group it with the pumpkin. So I'm gonna click there on one of my eyes, hold down shift, click on the other eye, hold, still holding shift down, clicking on the other eye, left clicking on the other nostril, still have shift down, clicking on the right nostril, and then I'm gonna group I'm going to hold down shift again and then I'm going to group everything and that should make holes into my jack-o-lantern. If I click off of it, you should have those eyes 
So we'd have to probably go back and make some adjustments for those nostrils. So they probably need to be a little bit longer because uh, these eyes were probably long enough to go all the way through and that's why I created a hole. Those nostrils were probably not long enough. So we probably need to ungroup this. Click on those nostrils individually. And then make them longer. Oh, we can probably do that from the left side there. I'll be zooming in would be best. Just trying to make him go through the nostril. And it looks like it changes the rotation of the nostril at the same time, uh, which should be okay because I could probably get rid of that one. This could be that nostril. Looks like it's going all the way through. So now I'm gonna just gonna have that one selected, copy, paste, mirror. And then let's go ahead and try this one more time. So these are holes. I'm gonna group them. Click off. There we go. So there you have the eyes, you have the nostrils, which could be adjusted just a bit, probably shifted over to the left. The eye could be uh, probably rotated a little bit more to the right here, but you can kind of see where it looks it's starting to look somewhat like our example or Jack Skeleton. Right, so play around with these different shapes that you have available for you. Think of how you could manipulate them. Right, so look you're looking for shapes that look similar to what your jack o' lantern is going to look like. Um, you want to even substitute maybe even some of these the text letters on your keyboard, maybe even those could be pretty helpful here. Uh, maybe some of these could be different characters that you could use and create them into a hole or, or turn them into a hole for your jack-o'-lantern. So let's pretend that we're done with this image. So what you could do is you could export as an STL or you could make sure you have your full jack-o'-lantern completed on the screen and click on send to. Then you can take a screenshot of it, click on that downloads folder, it's going to take you over to uh, either your downloads folder or it might even open up inside the project. So let's pretend that it took us over to the downloads folder, which it usually does. I'm going to save it as a PNG. I'm going to open up my file explorer. Um, I have this window open already because this is my project folder. I'm going to open up a similar file explorer window, so I'm going to hold down control, tap the letter N, go to my downloads folder. There's Jack there, there's our Tinkercad, drag it over to our project, and this is why I want you to upload your reference and then your Tinkercad screenshot image. Okay, and then you would go back to the Teams project. You need to go back to the bottom where it says attach, go ahead and upload both your reference and your Tinkercad image. After you attach it, you want to go ahead and to the top right hand corner and then go ahead and turn in. Okay, so if you have any questions of how to find a reference of one of your jack lanterns that you want to use for your, your pumpkin project, or if you need help creating negative space using the different whole options inside of Tinkercad, go ahead and let me know. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And feel free to watch any of the other related videos.